Hello, my name is John Wallachy, and I'm really delighted to be here live with you on IBM Expert TV. Really kind of fun. I've not done Expert TV yet. I think we've got a great hour planned for us uh, coming up. And what we're going to talk about is call for code and how you can get started. Um, so let's get started. Let's share my screen and we'll get ourselves uh, introduced to call for code. So Call for Code, a, uh, a project founded by the David Clark cause, uh, Tech for Good. And now four years ago, he was looking for a founding partner. And IBM is part of our uh, programs uh, to really lean in and, and use our technology for, for, for good purposes. Um, really delighted IBM joined the David Clark cause in, in uh, forming the Call for Code uh, program. It has evolved. It started out uh, four years ago as a, as a global challenge, and we ran a, a global challenge around natural disasters. And then uh, last year, we ran a challenge around uh, climate change and COVID-19. And this year, climate change is back. Huge, really important uh, societal problem and we're asking developers to answer the call and, and come and join us. Before we dive in, I wanted to introduce myself so that you can kind of follow along with me. Um, I'm an IBM developer advocate, and I love to talk about technology, IBM Cloud, IoT, Edge. Um, I bring a bunch of uh, combination of technologies together to help uh, developers and enterprises solve some of their uh, hardest problems, right? This marrying of IoT and edge processing with AI, with cloud, uh, very powerful. So follow me on IBM Developer, and um, I I write tutorials, I teach workshops, I do tons of live streams now in, in the pandemic world. i love to speak at conferences, and hopefully um, in the coming months and, and within the next year, we'll be out and you can come and, and connect with me. You can follow me on Twitter. So find me at, uh, at John Wallachy, and I love to engage uh, my audience. I tweet about technology and cloud and Node-RAD and IoT, I'm very focused on those, on those topics on message. We are going to uh, dive in and talk about Call for Code. And if you go to callforcode.org, great place to get started uh, to learn about uh, the challenge this year. As I mentioned, it's uh, climate change. And we're going to actually walk through a variety of the getting started materials, the technical resources, uh, how you can join, how to join the community and, and form a team. Because this is one, if you're passionate about saving the planet and passionate about climate change, I think you're going to find some interest here. I didn't mention yet that the prize for winning Call for Code uh, is $200,000. So, hey, this, hopefully I just got your attention. $200,000, form a team, enter. You've got fr the program launched, the challenge opened on March 22nd. It closes in uh, July 31st. So you've got time, form a team, and, and answer the call. Uh, so what... What we've got is a whole set of resources to help you understand the, how you can use technology to go and, and solve some of the, the three sub-themes under climate change for us. And, and so what you really want to do is, and I kind of mapped it out here for you so that you can you know, kind of in four steps. Um, number one is join the community. We've got all sorts of resources you, you get an IBM Cloud account, you get some credits so that you can uh, start to build an IBM Cloud, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, you come and you can sign up for our newsletter. We've got a, a Call for Code uh, weekly newsletter. There's a whole set of resources that you could come to the IBM developer slash call for code and um, really dive in, understand some of the problem sets and then we've got a Slack channel where you can find like-minded developers and problem solvers and, and form a team. And we've had some really amazing successes. As I mentioned, this is the fourth year. Last year, the team 
uh, was already in the pandemic. So everyone was off in, you know, alone, remote, and some teams formed online and they, they found themselves and they, they worked through the pandemic on, on call for code and they won $200,000 and we get thousands of submissions A really amazing technology. I'm one of the judges. I'm always so impressed. You guys just crush it. So um, the next thing you want to do in step two is understand some of the sub themes and the challenges that we've got. So zero hunger, clean water and sanitation and responsible production and green uh, recycling. So recycling um, is that last topic. You can build anything you want in those in those areas under climate change. In the best projects, find a way to you know maybe learn from the starter kit, maybe come with fresh ideas, do some design thinking with your team, go talk to subject matter experts, and and tell us as and we'll get to the submitted. So the submission um, it's all open source. So show us your code create a video, describe your project, right? Not not a huge amount of, of just to get the submission done, three minute video and and your code and you'd be amazed what you can do in that in the next couple of months. We want you to find a team though and and really become passionate about the the well the global challenge but then the topic because tech for good in so many ways that you, you can go make a difference. All right, so um, let's dive in because I wanted to narrate some of our pages here. Um, so yes, you just won $200,000. That's not where it ends. And matter of fact, that's what really distinguishes Call for Code and IBM's commitment to it is we go and help those winning teams take their technology and their idea and deploy it. We actually, we team you up, we partner you with, with um, the subject matter experts and IBM Cloud Credits and a whole surround of, of um, IBMers that m help you make your project successful. Um, the first winners, you know, and if you go back over the last couple of three years, four years now, uh, to see this their their idea become a startup, become a real vibrant business, go tech for good, and and really be deployed in the real world, solving problems, uh, just phenomenal. And I'll tell you just how I've been involved with some of the some of the prior winners and some of the open source projects. Uh, really, you know, happy to foster and nurture and mentor these teams uh, through their journey. So that is, you know, if if you choose to, you know, enter the call, answer the call, and and join us, and you win, know that it's it's not just hey, I wrote an idea down, threw it on the wall, and take your check to the bank. It's, you know, a long term, we're here with you making make a, a big difference. We've had lots of developers uh, join us all around the world. And it's phenomenal to see the, the Slack channel. I'll show you in a couple of minutes, um, just developers finding call for code, very passionate. Um, and then teams forming is just, you know, the coolest thing. And they're brainstorming their ideas right now. So you're perfect timing that you can join. We want you to get involved because it's, you know, maybe you're not a developer, um, but maybe you're a problem solver. Maybe you're a subject matter expert. Maybe you're really passionate about clean water or, um, you know, reducing uh, food uh, shortages and food deserts. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for you to join Call for Code and become, you know, part of that team. The best teams are not for five developers because, you know, they'll argue over that camel case. Um, and I'm, I'll am i have that argument with you for as long as you want me to. But the combination of understand the business problem, understand the code, create the video, bring your expertise, that, those are the best teams. They Just amazing set of, of, of expertise come together. So, so do get involved. And then the next thing, so, so maybe, you, you know, you kind of don't have an idea and we're going to show you how to get some ideas in a moment, but we've got 
some projects already that you could come and contribute to. We've either prior winners or other projects, and I'll show you some others of just amazing earthquake warning systems and and uh, farm uh, systems, just some really cool stuff that we could do. Or maybe you're really passionate about call for code for racial justice. And, you know, we all are, you know, coming up now on the anniversary of George Floyd's um, murder. And we should, we need to continue that drumbeat around making sure that, you know, societal change is, is you know, um, is we implement together. We just launched a bunch of projects last year after the, the, that event and um i think if you really are interested in that topic we've got some great uh th themes you can come and join us with a call for code for racial justice um and then you can come and follow the deployments of the prior teams the prior winners and we continue to to help and nurture and and foster their um their progress and so you can go read about that um, we've got some things coming up to help you as a developer, sort of one, understand the challenge, what to do. Glad you're joining me today, but more so we've got a whole set of, we actually have a whole developer uh, conference coming up on April 12th. I've done, I did two sessions for that. So we're kind of excited that you can maybe join register. It's free. You come and join that. Look at the schedule. I'll show you in, a, in the agenda in a couple of minutes. And then you can, you know, pick the, the sessions that you might be interested in and learn more about zero hunger or clean water or, you know, call for code or um, uh, come listen to some of our experts. And then, um, so we're going to actually, and there's a whole bunch of other resources here in terms of blog entries and learning more about call for code. Um, but let's go dive in because I kind of showed you the steps already. So when you get started, right? You know, you're a developer now, you're leaning in here and you, and you want to find a project and find a team and find an idea. And we actually are going to help you because we, we came up with uh, three themes and I want to sort of introduce you to the themes in a moment. Um, and uh, we actually built this page. So if you go to developer.ibm.com slash call for code and then you navigate to the get started tab, you'll number one join the community and then we've got a whole set of resources how to you know stay connected and then submit so the whole process the life the, the whole workflow um if you don't yet have an account create yourself and ibm go to this that page click on uh create an account and if you when you create an account you'll type in your your email address and your and a name and that's it right we'll send you a verification that you're a real person um, no credit card you're going to get 200 dollars worth of credits and and then you can start to build now what's in the ibm cloud catalog 190 services so ai watson ai a whole set of uh infrastructure as a service platform as a service so you know uh, Kubernetes and cloud and cloud foundry. And if you're interested, maybe a little more expensive, but OpenShift clusters, you can really build a full set of solutions, AI plus IOT plus a whole set of a APIs and, and uh, uh, microservices. So, so do take advantage of the catalog. So that's, there's a huge catalog. But uh, if you sign up through this portal, you get the $200 worth of credits and then come over to the catalog and check out the catalog of all the services and stand up uh, virtual machines or, or uh, clusters or just dive into IoT or, or mobile or um, some of the Watson AI machine learning. And we, we'll, we'll show you that later. All right, so, so then once you've signed up, I really encourage you to join the Slack channel because huge community kind of out there talking in we've got uh channels for the various starter kits which i'm going to show you in a moment we've got channels by topic so data science um uh, we've got iot there's a whole set of of different topics of course you'll be when you join you'll be in the general channel the global challenge channel and and there's a team building channel 
you can come and, and chat with us as mentors as well. And, and there's a whole bunch of channels that you can, you know, create your own private channel and, and chat with your teammates. All right. So, so that's a great resource and you can get to that right from um, the callforco.org page. All right. So now that you've joined Slack and you've signed yourself up, you want to come and learn about the project. You are, you know, we've got three themes. I'll just talk about the three themes this year. Um, and we actually built starter kits that introduce you to the themes. And we kind of fill in the idea a little bit more. We went and we talked to some of the experts. So, so what do I know? I'm a developer, right? But I'm passionate about climate change and I know a little bit about a lot of things in my community and things that interest me as a citizen scientist. And you know, I I kind of we listened to some actual PhDs and and experts, uh, NGOs and. We actually interviewed and they came and they spent some time with myself and some of my colleagues and and partners from from other companies. So it wasn't just IBM. It was partners from Intuit and uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, Unity, a bunch of companies joined us through this exercise of building starter kits. And, and together we brainstormed with these experts. Like if you were to go and work on zero hunger or clean water or you know green consumption what would you do what problems do you have and so we we did a whole set of design thinking and we built some hills and we started to fill in architecture diagrams i'll show you that in a moment um and so so you don't uh, though i encourage you to go and talk to experts you don't have to because we've done some of that work for you and we put our uh, what we learned in a starter kit. We actually, it's open source, so I'll show you the Git repositories as well. We've got a whole set of resources that you can go and dig into. We've got some videos that you can go and learn from as well. All right, so what we're gonna spend the next couple, maybe 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, talk about some of the starter kits. Um, and then we also have, and I'll sort of at the end of this, I'll, I'll tell you some of the other libraries. So. Remember I mentioned the IBM Cloud Catalog? Well, there's sort of an overwhelming number of services there. and We actually kind of curated a list from IBM Developer, because if you don't yet know about IBM Developer, a whole stack of tutorials and code patterns and workshop materials available to you. And you can come and learn a technology, learn how to deploy that technology, sometimes in IBM Cloud, sometimes as a hybrid cloud provider, you can go and take our, our tech and run it on other uh, uh, hyperscaler solutions, other hyperscaler cloud providers uh, built on top of OpenShift. Tons of resources there. Okay, so let's go take a look at Call for Code. and. Before I jump straight to the starter kits, you're kind of scratching your head and, and asking, well, what's a starter kit? Well, starter kits is our effort is to, you know, we went and talked to those experts and then we translate that, that set of design thinking into our problem statement. And then we started to think about use cases. If we were to go and try to solve uh, clean water and sanitation, these are some of the use cases that we could see that would be very powerful. And we described them as a set of hills. And we implemented like select parts of that, but we really want you and your teammates to go and, and actually build now a solution for this. Um, and we're going to uh, show you how to do that. So we'll we'll have a, a use case and a description of, the, of how we built this sort of the, the meta solutions. We'll show you the architecture diagram and uh, and then some tutorials on like how to go and turn that into something live. And I've done a whole stack of tutorials now for, for starter kits. This year I, I did one. Last year I think I did three. In our prior years I did one or two. So I've, I've done a bunch. Matter of fact, a fair number of them are built on top of Node-RED. So I see that uh, Tony is asking a question about Node-RED and I'm going to show you, Tony, um, one of the starter kits that we did, that I wrote this year that used a bunch of different APIs. 
Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just tease you on that one and we'll, we'll get to it in about 15 minutes. So hang on. All right. So, so that's a starter kit. A starter kit kind of brings all these resources together. It's open source. So it's available in GitHub. I'll show you that link in a moment. Well, I won't make you wonder. Uh, GitHub.org slash call for code. And I'll show it to you here as well. Um, github.org call dash four dash code. And uh, we've got a whole stack of open source resources, Apache public licensed, and you'll be able to go and scroll down to the production, the solution starter kits for, for water, hunger, and uh, green consumption. All right, we'll dive into these uh, open source resources. We we'll really encourage you to you know, fork the repository, look at those ex examples, read the tutorials that we composed. All right, so now that you know, and then we also give you data sets if you're a data scientist, right? We've, you know, finding the data is sometimes the hardest part. So we curated a whole set of data science uh, portals and data sets. We brought them together. Either we brought them into the repository or we link out to them wherever they happen to live. And, and so you can find some good data sets that you can use in your in your problem. And then we give you uh, links to other resources and documentation. All right, so so now you know what a starter kit is. Let's go and talk about the, the various uh, starter kits. So we're gonna start with clean water. It's one I worked on with my teammates. And um, so let's first talk about clean water. So it's, and how it relates to climate change. Because as as the the planet is heating up, it's changing the weather patterns. Yet you know it's hotter in one spot. It's you know more you know stronger hurricanes in another spot, and so we have the, a set of problems around. Yeah, the world kind of human life needs water, and if you can't deliver clean water for a whole variety, whether it's domestic household use or livestock or agriculture or industrial. You know, we all, we have a lot of processes that rely on water, reliable, clean water and sanitation. And so we started to think about, you know, what does that mean? How do you find the right res water resources? How do you identify the population and the population needs? And then um, bring the, you know, whether it's a drilling equipment to sub-Sahara Africa to drill the water, drill for water in the right places and monitor that water for, for cleanliness. And then also on the other side, sanitation. So we've got um, some experts came with Charity Water and the Hefner uh, Foundation came and talked to us about, you know, delivering clean water to, to the different uh, global populations jump in and take a look at it there we included a video so you can go play i won't play the video here for you now but um we've got some some clean water video um and you can listen to our experts in the video this is an overview uh we've got um i think i've covered this so you know we also partnered with the uh, united nations and the united nations um world health organization um, and we learned a whole bunch. They've got a whole set of sustainability goals. And so clean water is uh, sustainably goals. <laughs> I say that fast. Sustainability goal number six. And um, and they, they describe at the, at the UN what's really needed to kind of, you know, as a global community, what we need to do to ensure that we have clean water for future populations. And so that's a really important set of resources. Definitely encourage people to read about. Um, and the other struggle with, you know, maybe here, you know, different parts of the world, you know, we've got access to you turn the faucet on and the clean water comes out. Around the world, billions of people work very hard just to, you know, get clean water for their families. And so, if, and that's you know drives a whole set of health outcomes. It drives um, you know the economy, and you know holds the economy back. So if we had clean water all around the world, you'd be you know healthier 
stronger, uh, more vibrant communities and populations. So very important that we deliver clean water and sanitation to, to our uh, global communities. And we know that it's sort of been really affected by COVID-19 as well. All right, so where we started to talk to the experts, it was really about geolocation and understanding where water sources were, understand the water basins, understand the aquifers, um, putting sensors out in the field, making sure that we can uh, monitor the water after it's been, uh, we've drilled the well and then getting quality water quality reports. Um, and then actually building resources and tools to help those communities sustain themselves. And so we we started down a path and we built a whole set of, of and I'll link to it here quick. Um, let's do that in another tab. We actually started to build a whole bunch of hills. And we, you know, as we look through this idea, um, we have got eight of them. And so sort of the yellow is, hopefully you see that, uh, sort of the, the who, the community leader, right, or the resident, and then the what, right? They want to organize a community event and broadcast emergency information um, about something. Wow, and who? Um, whether it's geolocation data or you know, lead a construction project in less than seventy-two two hours, you know, learn about clean water in real time, right? So these are some of the ideas and then the resources that you might need to, to actually pull that off, okay? So, so go to grab one or more of these ideas for your, for your project and you know, build something amazing, come and impress me um, in uh, August. All right, so what we did is we built an architecture diagram. I'll, I'll zoom in on that too so that you can sort of see it. And so we've got the community leader over on the left. And, and then in the IBM cloud or in the cloud, we built a dashboard and that you can ask the dashboard questions with a chat bot and it's gonna come use machine learning to make recommendations back. We built a whole set of APIs using API connect. So we've got in IBM cloud, the ability to um, truly build internet scale applications so we can scale your, your API up uh, based on workload. And so we've kind of front-ended that with a clean water API. And then behind it is a whole set of resources. It's, it's water quality databases and APIs. It's mapping services. It's weather company data. So IBM is one of our uh, uh, companies is the weather company. And they, they obviously have a lot to say about water and climate change and, and the weather. So they are mostly interested in telling you about the forecast from about tomorrow or this afternoon if you're going to have a party but you also they also are sitting on this treasure trove of historical data um and then so you can start to build patterns and they've actually started to build forecast models that should tell you seasonal forecasts for a particular region and and the changes because of climate change uh, you can actually start to you know, move populations out of the way or plant different crops based on the impending weather pattern that's coming towards you. And so you start to make better choices as a farmer, as a community leader, um, or as an emergency response person. If you're worried about when how many hurricanes are coming, you know, last year, wow, it was like we we're beyond the, the named ones well into the alphabet. Uh, the Greek alphabet last year in the, on the east coast of the United States. I think we had like 25, 30 storms. It was ridiculous. So, so obviously the weather company very, very uh, involved in that. All right, so let's hit the back button and go take a look at, um, so we describe the architecture a little bit and we give you some resources. And this is Tony where we're going to do a node red one here. So we built a couple of tutorials for you. And uh, so I wrote this first one. It's called build a water quality dashboard with GeoJSON and node red. Let's go and jump into that one. Um, and, and so I published this just a couple of weeks ago. And the idea behind this one is, is yeah, we're going to, I'm going to 
show you through Node-RAD, but I was mostly interested in collecting from an API from the US Geological Survey. They, they actually have all these watershed maps and it turns out they make those maps available you know, as available through an API. And the the API, if you, if you go, you know, click through to it, it returns a, a GeoJSON object, which is basically a, a JSON object that describes um, longitude, latitude, features, polygons, points of, of interest on, you know, just as a big JSON object. What do you do with it? Well, we've got in Node-RED, Dave Conway Jones wrote this, uh, a node called Node-RED Contrib Web World Map. And you give it the GeoJSON that you just got from the USGS Geological Survey, and it builds a, a map. So, so just in the middle part here, you can actually go and say, you know, there's the river there's the watershed basin. So if there was a raindrop came and fell on the mountainside, it rolled down the street, you know, down the side of the slope into a stream, into a brook, into a river, to a lake, down into the, you know, whatever. And this is Atlanta. So if you don't know your geography from really kind of crazy picture here, um, Atlanta's got a great watershed. And they, you know, they've got a they're pulling water from from the mountains upstream and they use that water they put it in a they uh, purify it put it in a quarry and they deliver clean water to the residents in the atlanta area um, and they're doing a great job and they've got all these different watersheds which they monitor so so that's the second part of my tutorial here is so you take your your geojson and now you know your where your water is coming from it rains it comes downstream now you know where the streams are you can go and plot that, but you can actually go get yourself an API key from a company called Aquagenuity, and they deliver clean water reports uh, that you can type in your zip code and get a, a report. Now you get back again a JSON object, which I do, and then I parse in Node-RED, and I build myself a table, and if there is something that exceeds the EPA limit. So in the United States, we have the Environmental Protection Agency and they issue toxicology uh, maximums. So if your, you know, if your water is, is in good and the, the range that is normal is sort of here, everything's okay. But if, if you've got some chemical or pollutant or contaminant that's in your water, and it exceeds the EPA limits, well, that's not good. You know, it's, what is the water uh, district doing to hopefully protect you and your residents? And so I, I kind of mark those in red. Um, and so we kind of built this really cool set of, and I give you instructions on installing Node-RED and IBM Cloud or on your local laptop. And then the prerequisites, the, you need uh, Node-RED UI table and Node-RED, Node, um, what else? I'll, I'll tell you down below here. Dashboard and Contrib Web World Map. And you go get yourself an API key from Aquagenuity. And in about 30 minutes, you copy and paste my flow into your Node-RED tutorial. And, and then I also, I just don't want you to go take my flow and not understand it. So I kind of teach you about in my tutorial here, what is GeoJSON? and how to go and query that watershed API, and then how to go get yourself a, um, a, a contaminant report from Aquagenuity. They, they've got an API, it's free, that you can sign up for, and it's called Get Water Score. You get back a table of, or it's an array of JSON objects that teach you about um, the water in your, and matter of fact, you can order a kit and I've got, my daughters and they're all, you know, budding scientists. And uh, so we filled a, a jug of water. We sent it into Aquagenuity and for a fee, they sent me back a water report, not just the, the free one I get from any zip code I want, but I actually got a water report from my faucet. So that was, you know, that was very positive. 
All right, so so that was the, the score, and then I show you how to build some flows. I built it for my hometown in, in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And other interesting about Ridgewood is sort of, uh, I live close to New York, and if you remember 150 years ago, the Industrial Revolution was gearing up 1800s, 1900s. And uh, so the Patterson has a waterfall. It's fed through from the uh, Passaic River. I kind of live upstream of the Passaic River, as I'll tell you a little more about that. And that uh, well, we we know the story of Thomas Edison, right? So Thomas Edison was generating electricity. Well, the best way, one of the easiest ways to generate electricity, even still today, is hydroelectric. And so there's a dam and a, a hydro plant in Patterson. It was creating electricity. And what do you do with electricity? Well, you build things. And so they had all these factories in New Jersey and they didn't, you know, they were making stuff for the industrial revolution. It was sort of the first set of, of you know, goods for production and mass production. Um, but then they, they had all these contaminants and they didn't know at the time if it was good or bad for the environment and they dumped it back in the stream or into the forest and and it's not good because you know we had all these super fun sites suddenly to, to go clean up and so i care about my water um and so upstream i want to know what's upstream if there was a you know a contaminant upstream i want to know where my water is from so that's so my little story about ridgewood new jersey and and water and you, matter of fact i think in two next week I've got a whole tutorial about this particular code pattern. I uh, do encourage you to go enjoy it. Um, GeoJSON gives you the longitude, latitude, and points and lines and polygons. And you know you draw stuff on a map, essentially. Here's how to draw stuff on a map. And uh, so I give you the, the longitude, latitude of, of where Dilbert's um, tech uh, outsourcing is located. And then, and then you go and the other cool thing here is the US Geological Survey makes available all of the watershed details. And so it, there's a couple of streams that kind of flow through uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey. And so I know the flood gauges and I found them on the, on the map here and I plug that into the API and it gives me the watershed for that particular area. And I can go and I kind of even give you the curl command here and you get back the GeoJSON, it looks like that. So that's the watershed for the Hohokus Brook, if you're interested. And then you go and get yourself the equity key and you put it, you bring all these, you mash these up and you bring them into a dashboard. And so I have a couple of examples here. Um, Tony, that was a really long answer, but at the end of this, there's a node red flow that you can paste this in. Um, and so I show you the Ridgewood, New Jersey one, just sort of the two examples of Hocus Brook and the Saddle River and, you know, draw a picture um, and a table and a set of dashboards and some buttons. And then I give you the Atlanta, Georgia, because we went and talked to some experts and, you know, they've got this big watershed and turns out it's like all these tributaries. So I spent like hours looking for the tributaries in, in the um, the API. And so it, you, so it goes on. It's a lot of copy paste. Don't worry. Um, and I build, you know, Peachtree Creek and Nancy Creek and Island Creek, and they all kind of flow into the, into the main, uh, the main river. All right. So that's, that's a great tutorial. I had fun writing that. All right. There was another question from Peiko here. Uh, thanks for joining. And uh, clean water and sanitation is it advisable possible to develop a solution that touches on aspects of clean water and sanitation? So yes, so so good because I want. Let's go back here. Um, it's it, it, uh, to be you know if you really think about this, you're you're drawing water from an aquifer or from a lake or from a river, and you know you want to test that it's clean and useful, so say domestic use, uh, you know, cooking and cleaning and so forth, or or maybe industrial or to feed your livestock or to water your, your garden and your farm, you want it to be clean. But then what happens in the 
in the farm. Well, you put fertilizer and then the fertilizer runs off into a stream and now you've got too much nitrogen in your stream and that stream rolls to a lake and the lake you know has an algae bloom and suddenly you've got sanitation problems in the, in the lake the fish die because there's no oxygen because the algae consumed all the oxygen um, or you give it to your livestock and there's you know byproducts of livestock or industrial you send it through some industrial process and now it's got contaminants in it and so there are um, sanitation issues you know yes you started with clean water but at the outcome of that there's dirty water and so you want to make sure that you're building a holistic set of solutions that kind of follows the water through its life cycle all right so that's sort of how to bring the two pieces together so absolutely if you can think of an idea to monitor the water on both sides or, or propose how you could help a community on both sides of that uh, solution really important um, we had some really cool, so Ridgewood water, Ridgewood water takes care of the clean side and there's a sanitation department that worries about the, the other side of it. And so they were trying to predict, and this was really clever. I don't know how they do this, but they take samples and they were able to predict the amount of COVID in the water based on, you know, what you flush down the toilet. Um, I didn't know that. So they, but they could find indicators of, of the vaccine, oh, I'm sorry, of the virus in, in the water. And I think they were able to do that all around the country. Uh, so yeah, so you could do water quality reports on both sides. All right, that was a long time on the one, that's the one I wrote, so it's kind of passionate there. Let's go take a look at some of the others because these are so clever too. Um, let's go dig into uh, recycling and green consumption. So, so this particular starter kit thinks about and proposes some ideas on how to do responsible production for, so Apple started to do this and other tech companies have started to think through this and, and think some of the computer industries have started to. So they know that they're gonna produce a good, but then at the end of its useful life, it needs to be recycled. And so if they can build build for recycling at the very beginning, it helps, you can disassemble it, you can take the battery out or the nickel, whatever bad chemical component, and if you can disassemble it at its end of its useful life cycle, um, you can recover the metals or the battery components. Very clever, so if you, if you, one, you reduce the amount of landfill, and then two, you might get residual value out of the components that you can recycle. So there's there's a monetary um, incentive here to sort of make it uh, economic to do it successfully. So think through some of those ideas. All right, and so they include a video. Um, now, I, I my example was just that a tech electronic boards uh, recycling but there's also you know how do you recycle the agricultural uh, byproducts and waste um, a lot of different use cases and you know because you can turn that into um, uh, put it roll it back into the soil so that you can you know build uh, good good soil for your next year's crop so forth and so they, they too went and talked to some experts. Um, they've got some statistics here. They link over to uh, sustainability development goal number 12, because uh, that's one of the UN goals. And so number 12 talks about achieving economic growth and sustainable development and reducing our impact, the, the ecological impact and footprint on the, on the planet. Because um, we know that we're sort of in an unsustainable consumer environment today we just have to change our patterns and you know simple stuff like we you know in bergen county or ridgeway they you go to the supermarket they don't sell you a plastic bag and you don't put your groceries in a plastic bag they put it into a, a paper bag and or you could bring your own bag and not be charged a nickel um 
and you bring your own bag and then you bring it back again and back again it's pretty easy if as long as you remember half the time wink um but at least i get the paper bag and i know i can recycle the paper bag on recycling day versus the, the plastic bags just you know it's, it's going to go to a landfill and be in a landfill for 50 years Okay, so they list a whole bunch of ideas here on what you might do as to do uh, clean, responsible recycling and green consumption. And, and honestly, it's about design at the front end and then better processes on the back end too. And so when you think about how your product is gonna be recycled, you actually make design choices differently. Uh, very clever. I, I was really impressed with this particular starter kit as well. Um, and so what they did was they created a um, an architecture diagram. They they built their solution. I'll show you that in a little bit bigger view. Um, they put they put it in a IBM Container Service, so IKS or IBM Cloud Container Service. It runs on top of Kubernetes. They deployed a node application to it, and, and that node application has a React front end that the user interacts with. Maybe it's a dashboard and a website. Um, they call out to a cloud and database where they're storing information about their solution. And then they use a set of AI services here. So Watson Discovery, very powerful, lets you search news articles uh, about a topic and bring that into into your dashboards and then you, they collect up market data through watson discovery and they present that back to the user all right so that was kind of clever let's go and see what else they got here i know they've got some resources um they give you they give you instructions on how to deploy a, an app to uh kubernetes you know how to stand up a node application maybe you want to run your node red application and in Kubernetes, you containerize your Node-RED app, lots of instructions on how to do that, and then build a 12-factor app and deploy it over to uh, Kubernetes. All right, and so they kind of have some tutorials on how to do that, some tutorials about Watson Discovery, a very powerful set of text analytics tools to do summarization and discovery around you know, a topic. So there, it's out reading like every newspaper on the planet every day. And it's categorizing all of those news articles in all the different categories. So it reads the article, figures out what its article's about, who the experts are. And then if you're interested in that particular topic or theme, surfaces that through the API. Uh, they show you how to use that with, uh, connect that to CloudInt. And um, so they've got some examples here with Node and with Cloudint. And there's a whole set of APIs. Cloudint is an open source database built on top of CouchDB. They've got uh, some data sets. I didn't talk about the data sets over in Clean Water, but we had a ton of data sets around um, uh, water resources. They've got uh, data sets here for um, the the UN and the uh, European Union. Um, and they've got a whole number of uh, NGO documents as well that you can go learn from. And they had a great team too. I was really impressed with this team uh, coming together. All right, we've got a couple of more. Let's go talk about, I don't want to talk about the, the technical library. I want to go talk about zero hunger. So if you know, like what happened in the, during the pandemic, a lot of people sort of suddenly found themselves out of work. And that, you know, when, when you're out of work and you're sort of, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, suddenly you're hungry. And, you know, the food banks, you know, all around the world became really important lifelines to, to help people through the pandemic. Um, and so how do you find and actually make sure that that's a sustainable, you know, how do you feed your populations? Um, uh, you know, we, you know, we volunteer down in, in the, the local food pantry and, you know, there's, you know, constant food uh, donation drives and all of that, you know, just keep my ears open where we can help. Um, but, but there's great opportunity for, 
for us to build tech to make that easier to connect, you know, communities in need and, you know, and um, philanthropy. So they've got um, a cool, cool set of ideas on how to go fight hunger. Uh, there's everything from food deserts. So if you want your population to be healthy, they can't only be going for the fast food right choice because it's easy and cheap. You want it to deliver fresh foods and fresh market, set of farm to table types of, of much better sustainable uh, living styles. And so there's, you know, how do you, that's a lot of population data that you can go and, and do some uh, data science with. I, I did some data science on this a couple of years ago. It's kind of amazing what you can find out for, for food deserts. And they talk about some of the food cooperatives and how to apply technology to the food cooperatives. So, so this was uh, pretty, pretty amazing as well. Um, they do have a, let's go take a look at their uh, architecture diagram. So they've got a camera and they, they tied in so you can, from your mobile phone, um, send a text message that's handled by Node-RED. It's actually one of our partners in Australia helped us with this one. So we use the, the Australia uh, mobile provider Telstra. It's really kind of clever, amazing. Uh, so you can tie in the SMS messages back to, to Node-RED and then orchestrate, um, build a dashboard and with some machine learning and object storage and look like they've got some cloud pack for data as a service. Um, kind of amazing what you can do there. Okay, we've got uh, 10 minutes. So there's, they also too have, and I'll just scroll through it, I think. I wanted to show you their tutorials because they have a tutorial with no red. Um, they're analyzing, you know, geospatial information. They use some cloud functions. So if you're planning on using any serverless, they've got a great little tutorial here on uh, serverless um, and then how to build a node red starter kit and how to, you know, I built a, so I wrote both of those, actually I wrote all three of those. Um, but it was all fun. That's last year stuff is all cool. Um, and then if you maybe you've got a blockchain solution. So I, I did a blockchain solution too, because I'm an IoT guy. And so you can build IoT. This is an IoT asset tracker. And I wrote all the environmental conditions to a blockchain. Kind of fun. A uh, little solution that I've published as a code pattern. Um, and then they've got AI services here and some data science patterns and tutorials and IoT. Um, uh, turn your smartphone into an IoT device. Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, so go take a look at some of that. That's uh, it's all kind of clever. I, I've done all these tutorials or or written and I just, I learn something new every day. All right, so we've kind of wrapped up on the starter kits, and and I, you know, if you come in new to a call for code and you want to get an idea, we've got some great tutorials and starter kits to get you going. But maybe you know everything already and just need some tips. And so we do have. I'm looking for the this one. So we just have a set of libraries that you can come and you know learn about any particular technology, whether it's AI or data science or IoT or deployments on, you know, Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry, we've got, you know, got a whole sort of, of tools there. The other thing I want to encourage you to is if you got some time and you want to go, and we've already established some communities, remember winners from prior years, they're sort of deploying their solutions, well, they're open source. So you can go and, you know, maybe you want to go contribute to the cluster duck protocol or to an early earthquake warning system. Um, I've been writing, helping write the firmware for the, the early earthquake warning system. It's just the, the coolest project. The idea is if you can sense earthquake is just started, earthquakes travel through the ground, they don't travel the speed of light. So if you've got enough sensors, you can say, ooh, that's an earthquake, and then warn the community 50 miles away 
And, you know, they've got 10 seconds to sort of grab their kids and get out the building or stop an elevator at the floor, or open the doors or stop the train. You really save lives. If you, if you know the earthquake is coming now, you can't predict the earthquake or prevent the earthquake, but you can detect an earthquake and, and warn the people that are, that are in harm's way. So a really cool project if you want to come and join Open EW, do, do take advantage of that. Um, maybe you want to go help farmers, right? So we've got a project for small farmers optimizing their water usage or build a, a mesh network uh, using IoT devices. Uh, we've got a drone project with uh, that Pedro kind of came up with, and I've done some work on the, the drone aid solution as well. Flow my drone around my yard and with object detection. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, so that's all available in our there's all there, you know, there's the cluster duck mesh network. Promoteo last year, the winners for Call for Code 2019 or two years ago. Um, they instrumented Raspberry Pis on the turnout jackets for firefighters. And they were collecting all and they're and uh, now they've got a watch, a Samsung watch. And so they're collecting environmental conditions of what, what that firefighter was exposed to, and they're relaying that back to the cloud so that there's a health record for the firefighter. And so you can kind of protect that firefighter over the longevity of their of their career, understand you know what, what they were exposed to. So that's, that project is called uh, Promoteo. Agrali was the winner last year. Uh, they built a a small farm, just a sustainable farming solution was kind of amazing. And then you've got the starter kits for this year. Now, the starter kits for this year, what's important here is that it's all Apache licensed. So you can go and fork our community, start if you like it. Um, you can come and read through it and or contribute back or just take our stuff. And the best thing about open source is you can go and build on top of sh the shoulders of giants. And so take my code and build something amazing with it, right? Come ask me questions and, uh, you know, make it better if, because, you know, look, yesterday's code was crap and we can make it better together today. All right, so let me ask, I see there is one more question from Tommy again about responsive buildings. Ah, so let's go back. Did you see that one? That was kind of clever. This project is called let me scroll through. Where would it go? At the very top. I'm looking, looking at, at it's Asimo. It's called Asimo. So there's two of them. There's there's this particular one helps figure out how to build back better. There's another solution. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to scroll past it here. Sorry to make you all dizzy. It was up top. Why am I not seeing it? Um, <clears throat> they they use AI to figure out how to build a, a building in Nepal earthquake, for instance. How do you decide which buildings are too unstable to uh, repair, and how many of them can be you know fixed safely? And so they, they, the cool little project last year that uh, a couple of years ago, that was part of the uh, 2018, 2019 global challenges. They were one of the regional winners at the time. Cool. We are coming to the top of the hour. And I really wanted to uh, kind of leave you with a couple of uh, call to actions. So number one, accept the challenge and answer the call. Sign up for... Uh, the Digital Developer Conference next week. It is on April 12th. We've Once you've registered, you can go and take a look at the agenda. So just jump down to that and do some expand. We've got some experts come and join us. You'll be joined by um, Daniel Crook, who is our CTO for Call for Code, and our lead, uh, Laurent uh, from the United Nations. Um, I see that Brian, Brian Naus, was from the 2018 inaugural winning uh, Call for Code project. Uh, he'll talk about the cluster duct protocol. Um, and then the 2019 um, winner, Solme, will, will join and talk about that as well. 
Um, you'll hear about technology from a bunch of different experts, Steve and Pedro, and and then you'll come and hear about starter kits. You'll hear from uh, from Daniel and myself and and one of our uh, cool app last year from Dave Chura. Um, and then we've got a whole stack of of an, of an agenda packed. So do register for uh, the Digital Developer Conference next uh, next week. And if I haven't said it, do join the challenge and accept the call. So visit uh, callforcode.org or developer.ibm.com slash callforcode. And um, really looking forward to seeing your solution in a uh, couple of months. All right. And then, of course, follow me on Twitter at John Wallachy. I uh, always love to engage with developers there. I wanted to uh, thank everyone for spending the hour with me, and we'll wrap up here.